This video is about how to use the InLab Reaction Time Tester. Over here we have a switch, which is the power switch, and there's an LED here. When we turn the switch on, we see the LED comes on, and after a couple seconds you'll notice there's a welcome message here. Up here is an elapsed timer that shows us how long it has been since the switch was turned on. Down here, this is a rotary switch that allows us to choose between the various modes in which the reaction timer can operate. Here is a push button switch, and here are three LEDs up at the top. The switch and these LEDs will become important for the timing modes. The first mode we're interested in is the random delay one. You notice as we rotate this, we see the different modes show up here. So the first one we're interested in one says RD no seek. That means a random delay, no sequence. How this one works is when I press this button, after a random amount of time, these three LEDs will light up and then I want to press the button again. The timer will then show me how much time elapsed from when the lights came on till I press the button. Here's an example. It says 495 milliseconds. You may have noticed the display said get ready, get ready right after I press the button. Here we go again. 594 milliseconds. So that's the time it took from when the LEDs lit up until I pressed the button. The other mode that we're interested in is called fixed interval. Here we see it says FI for fixed interval, 500 milliseconds. Again, I press the button and the LEDs will light up, but there's a difference. In this case, before all three LEDs light up, first one will light up, and then the next, and then the next, and finally all three of them together. Each step in that sequence will have a delay of 500 milliseconds. So this allows me to anticipate when they're all going to light up together. Here we go. 269 milliseconds. Again, that's from when they all three light up till I press the button. Here we go again. 2547 milliseconds. Let's try again. 390 milliseconds. Again, usually these times will be lower than the other times because we can anticipate what's going to happen by the sequence of the LEDs. So that's how the reaction timer works. 